Also, can, can we check your microphone? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. No, 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 no. You, you need to unmute yourself. Yeah, you need to unmute yourself. I can't hear this one. Oh, she has to what? But is mine okay? Have you tested mine? It's okay. Yes, no. All right. Yes. No, yours is okay. Hello. Dr. Vincent, welcome. Good evening. Good evening from Barcelona. <laughs> hello, Nuria. Hi, hello. Hola, Blanca. Hola. <laughs> Welcome. Um, thank you. It's two Hi, thank you very much. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. You are John, right? John is you. Yeah. Okay. I am John. So, and it's a, my pleasure to meet you, to see your face. You. First of all, first of <laughs> and uh, I beg your pardon, but I have prepared a very short, a brief PowerPoint. It's not necessary for me to use it, but if you want, okay. I can share these slides and I can give to you the slides if you consider this could be a help for anybody. So it's up to you. If you want, I can do it. If not, it's, 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 it's all right. It's all right. Um, you can share your slides um, for everybody. Yeah, if you want. See. Yeah, she can <clears throat> share the screen. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I will share the screen. I will do the same. Yeah. Yeah, great. Hmm. Okay. okay. So, so we're going to follow the program, and uh, I would like to um, introduce the president of the foundation to you. Uh, her name is uh, Mrs. Dayokeshi. She's here, and uh, I, she she will start with the opening remarks. So, uh, Mrs. Dayokeshi, please over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Um, let me first welcome all these very brilliant and beautiful women. Usually, <laughs> in my own time, they will say you cannot combine beauty and brains. But these days, we know different, don't we? <laughs> but it's a pleasure to welcome you all. Um, I am Mrs. Dayo Keshi, the president founder of AfriGood Foundation. <laughs> um, the foundation has been around for a decade plus. Um, however, it is um, now the turn for us to involve younger, dynamic women like you to come on board. And you all know as much as I do that it hasn't been an easy road to travel for most of us women, especially in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Um, as with all the protests from the um, young, young men who are also part of this organization, uh, they felt, why girl tech? What of boys tech? And I said, just hold on. Let me do girl tech Africa first. Why? Because I know that when way back in school, I did not have the opportunity of taking up any science subject. It wasn't allowed for women. We could only train to be secretaries or nurses and mm. so, you know, supportive staff. Mm. Now, in your generation, you are much, much luckier than we were then. So today, yeah. everybody knows it's not about being a man or a woman. But you see, we as women and dynamic women like you owe it to this generation and future generations that they are, to be, <laughs> you know, equally as it were. So having said so, um, that is one of the reasons why I felt that we should have a special edition, you know, in AfriGrowth Foundation, which we call the Girl Tech Africa. You know, girls in technology in Africa. Um, I had even a bit um, of this gruntle dissatisfaction from some of my funders. But I made it clear that it is a reality, and that is part of what I would be expecting you to share. It's, it's real. The truth is that you readily have more young men in technology than women. Even That's true. Now. 
And because even now it's good because you are more exposed to different aspects of gathering information. So nobody can say you can't research the internet unless you are this gender. So it has made that doable for most women. So but what we are doing today is to highlight the need for more young girls to be a strong part of technology, you know, and be involved, hands in, hands on, or whatever you want to call it. And for that reason, I said, okay, we'll come up with a program, you know, which we have designed, and we called it Girl Tech Africa. And we are hoping that, you know, through this program, we would be able to create a multiplier effect at the end of all this that will continue to have maximum impact on engaging young girls into technology. Um, somebody pointed out to me while we were um, talking about this, because I like testing the waters before I come out with any program. And he actually said to me, you know what? If after this, you want to run another program along this line, get about two men to come and explain even to the world why women have to be involved in technology. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I, I definitely would think of that. I wish you had told me this a while back. I would have just put you in here with the four other women who are also very dynamic. And he said, no, it's not really about me. I am a convert already. It's about convincing that as a woman, I can testify to this. It took me, a, you know, it was more tedious for me to be able to climb the ladder to the height I got to. Now, my other counterparts did not go through all that stress. I can assure you of that. And sometimes, even when you have gone through all this, guess what? You know, I walk into a place and I'm leading, you know, because most of the men back then, I worked in, in government. They were all, you know, men. I was the only woman. And I was the topmost in rank, <clears throat> in high rank. And as soon as we walked in there, I won't even say where it is. You know, the, the, the coordinator of that program, because it was high up in government, talked to me and said, ah, um, no, 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 don't sit there. The seat is meant for the leader, whoever has led the delegation. And you could hear a pin drop. But I summoned the courage and I said, um, Your Excellency, sir, I am leading this delegation. He said, you, a woman? I said, it has nothing to do with my gender. I am the qualified one to lead this delegation. And for that reason, I can assure you, my dear sisters, that's why we are sitting there today. Because I want us to know as women that the conversation must continue until it gets to a point where everybody will be, you know what, who is even caring about gender? And it will come. With that, I welcome you. I'm not supposed to be giving this talk. But I will be here, I'm, I'm told I can live after this. I'm going nowhere. I want to sit down and listen to this. And I do hope out of this, we'll be able to form a, a more stronger gathering or a stronger group that will constantly keep pushing young girls into technology. I didn't have that opportunity, but never mm -hmm. because, yeah, because I first operated, um, you know, a computer you know, at the age of 42. Now today I watch my grandchildren operating their way, going through cyberspace as if it were nothing. At the age of eight, nine, 10 years old, even one is six. So thank you very much, ladies. I hand over back to you, but okay. I'm sure I'm listening to everything. And I do hope I will gain from this, but most importantly, Importantly, that we'll be able to convince, not necessarily the girls, they are not the problem. It's con convincing people generally to say, you know what, it's not about gender, it's about what is up here. Right? Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. We can um, give the president a, a round of applause. That was like <laughs> thunder. Um, yes, yes, yes. I, I really love the fact that um, our objective is uh, to be able to, you know, engage more women 
more girls in technology. And uh, we believe that in order to have more women in technology tomorrow, we must have more women in technology today. And which is one of the reason, rather more girls in technology today. And which is the reason why um, we are having this uh, round table discussion. So we want to quickly move into the main program now and I will be bringing uh, Mata Onyata to the table. Um, she's the executive director of uh, Eagles Advocacy. Uh, what they do is they promote the rights of women and children through sensitization. Mata Onyata, through Eagles Advocacy, recently in the northern part of the country on how to effectively use the computer system. So, Mata Onyata, uh, we have got, I'm going to open the floor to you. You are talking on tackling the barriers to digital gender inclusion in underprivileged communities. Mata Oyata, please, the floor is yours now. Mata, I... It seems like you're not audible, we're not hearing you. Just matter. Oh, she's she's off. Okay. Um while Mata is setting up her device, can we quickly move to Nuria? Nuria, you okay, there? okay. <clears throat> then yes. let me let me you to share my my screen. A screen, okay. So <clears throat> while you're sharing your screen, uh, let me introduce you to the uh, roundtable members. Okay. Nuria is a professor at the Polytechnic <clears throat> University of Catalonia in Spain, and uh, currently she is the president of the Catalan Technology Society. Uh, there is something uh, intriguing about Nuria, and it's the fact that she is majored in material science and metallurgy. But interestingly, she's encouraging born women to go into technology. So maybe you're going to share why you're doing this with us um, along with your presentation. Okay, thank you very much. I beg your pardon because my English is not as good as, good as I would, but I have my passion, and I think it's the best translator my passion. So for that reason, I'm sharing with you this uh, short, very brief presentation. <clears throat> Let me you to, 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 um, to share my starting point. Starting point is futurist technology. Do you agree with me? And girls are the women of the future. Then by combining these two sentences, we have the girl, must be involved in technology. That's mandatory. That's not an option. It's necessary to do this. But uh, who is me? Uh, thank you, John, for, my, for your presentation. When people talk about me, they usually talk about my, my, uh, my degree or my title and my awards. Of course, I, I, I got it. But I like to introduce myself like this. This is me. I'm blacksmith. I'm teaching metallurgy and metallurgical engineering, but I am a passionate blacksmith on my free time. So at home, I have some iron pieces doing by myself. And these are my daughters. When my daughters, they were, were their child, people ask them, your mother is working with iron and your mother, she's not doing natural things like baking. And I start baking. And this is the most uh, beautiful cake I never done. This is a cake I spent a whole day for doing. And at that point, I said to me, okay, I can working by iron, but baking also. 
And I love to do anything. I like drawing, painting, writing. I have a, 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 a novel and is a, a feminine novel. Why not? Why uh, a technology woman can be, uh, people think that a technology woman must be closed in a laboratory. No, other also, I'm daughter, they are my parents. And let me you to say something, my parents, they have no studies. So when I was a young girl, my father said to me, oh, studies is for rich people, we are not rich, but I work hard for getting my studies for girls at that point. So that's the reason I can't say to young girls in Africa, if you want, you can do it. And this is my passion, to disseminate, to be a teacher, and to share all my knowledge. So about pioneers in STEAM, if I ask to you, please tell me the name of an inventor, surely in all the textbook, all the references and models are men. So we have a lot of male references like Da Vinci, Gutenberg, uh, Einstein, Mr. Gaudi, Franklin, Volta, and a lot of. And if you search the name in Google, you will have millions, millions of references about that men and the inventions. But if I ask to you about a female inventor, oh my God, there was any women invented nothing at all in the history, of course. There were a lot, but they are disappeared from textbook. So for many, many, many generations, girls have grown up without feminine models. So that's the reason we don't know nothing about Josephine Cochrane, the, the, the woman who invented the dishwasher, or Mary Anderson, who invented the wipes, or Hedy Lamar, he invented the protocol for um, inalambric communication. So we have now Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or GPS or Beula Louis Henry. We have the freezer or the foldable umbrella or the linotip. So they were the inventors, but the names, their names were disappeared from textbooks. So we were invisible. So with all this invisible ingenuity, all this talent disappeared from textbook. That is the reason for lack of models is a natural lack of vocations. But technology in future must be built by hybrid teams. A hybrid teams is the name I prefer for talking about men and women, boys and girls working together because it's the, the only team who can work is the hybrid team. That's the reason mentoring, I consider that it's the best tool because in mentoring, adult women can be the mentors for mentees. Mentees are young girls. So young girls have a very close role model and say, okay, I want to be like her. I can be like her. So being a role model is easy. You can get a dozen uh, women and then can be the mentors of a dozen girls. So you have more than 100 uh, mentees um, in young girls. So uh, the, the main topic for this is highlighting the, the social commitment of technology because if you're talking about technology only for cars and rockets and planes and dirty things, Girls don't love this. Girls love technology, but always when technology is uh, addressed to improving the quality of life of people. And this is technology also. That's the reason we have, well, now we are having this meeting by, by internet. Oh, this is perfect. This is technology. So the fact and futures, uh, the fact and figures in all the world is this. We have more women than men studying all the disciplines but in technology, we are under 30%, and that's not good. And in my university, this is the population map. Red is men, blue is women. All the co every column is a department. This is the, the, the distribution of men and women in my university, but every tech university around the world are the same. And we need to get 50-50. 
And the only thing is working in hybrid teams, teamwork, girls and boys. And I always use this figure. This figure is human castles. It's very typical here in Catalonia. Human castles, when we're just boys, they never reach it up to eight stages. But now, girls and boys are working together in human castles, and then they have been able to reach the 10 stages. This is the best example. Working together, boys and girls will reach it, the, the, the best results. And mentoring is a nice tool because future belongs to you, young people, young generations. And the only way for building up a nice future is working together. That's all. Oh, that, that's an, another beautiful um, presentation from Nuria. Um, I love the fact that um, you were able to dig out a uh, historic um, intervention, said that it has been invisible for too long, and these days we need to bring this intervention um, out. That is, that is very, very true. And also, we need more mentors. Yes. Adult women mentoring young girls. That is a very good strategy on um, bridging the gender gap in ICT. Thank you very much, Nuria. Can we give Nuria a, a round of applause, please? Thank you, everybody. So um, I would like to, I don't know if um, there's any contribution. OK, um, Octavia. Shijiwa, can you please unmute yourself and introduce yourself? Make your contributions briefly, please. Oh, well, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Octavia. I'm from South hi. Africa, Cape Town. And I'm just here to listen in. And one of my favorite ladies is here, Baratang. She's going to present. But Nuria, thank you so much for that. I just joined in. And I'm glad for this platform and what you're doing. So I'm just here to listen. Thank you very much. So we will um, want to we'd like to know if Mata is back. Oh, okay, Mata, are you there? Um, Oban is Sophia. Yes, I'm here. All right, all right, good. See, uh, with your various um, experience in the non-governmental sector. Uh, both um, international and national, um, you're being known for your anal analytical skills. Now, what is your thought on um, specific job and sectors being identified or tagged as men's domain? Okay, thank you for having me here. So, um, we all know perceived men domain, domineering um, job sectors such as construction, IT, and innovation. And the reason why these attacks demand jobs is because um, we have a deep protest theoretical view of what um, gender role is perceived to be all about. Um, for centuries now, we've noticed that both genders are normally raised or nurtured by parents for the knowledge or rather the notion that certain professional roles are located to them to take up in the future. So let's take for example, most male children are groomed to having the notion that they could become engineers when they grow up and female child a nurse. And there's also what we call the um, gender neutral roles, which could be doctors and lawyers. Um, a case study I'd like to give you is a woman called Maria Patterson. She happens to be one of the few um, female pilots we have in the US. She made a statement. She said that um, if she had known that a woman's profession could also be piloting. She would have jumped into it as early as she was seven years old. So due to the advent of digitalization, we find that people are becoming more aware. The gender gap is beginning to narrow down. And now the issue here has digressed from the unwillingness of these job sectors to accommodate females, but breaking mental barriers of uprising females, believing that they do not possess the capacities of taking up these job roles or fitting into these sectors perceived as male domains. So um, what can we actually do to bridge this gap? 
So what we can do is um, younger females need to be convinced. They also need to be inspired and encouraged through mentorship by their fellow genders who has climbed up this ladder successfully. They need to be inspired by these women. They need to take up the field in the first place. That is in terms of education. They also need to apply to these jobs. They need to get these jobs. They need to maintain their roles in these jobs and not just maintaining these roles. They also need to have a higher aim about them climbing up that ladder. And this circle then continues in a vicious circle of women empowering other women in these sectors known as main domains. And recently it has been made it easier through digital inclusion. So um, conclusively, I would just like to give a word of advice and the advice is to always have a purpose because when there is no purpose, vulnerability tends to set in. You start getting scared to take up those bold steps. And then by the time you come to understand your purpose, you will not just be able to conquer those fears, you will also be effective, you will also be able to effectively communicate your ideas and um, take actions. Thanks. That that's that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. it is. Thank you very much, Sophia. I love your um, conclusion. Always have a purpose. I think that is a powerful one. And also, you mentioned the fact that women in these sectors should encourage other women, try to empower them. That is, that is very good. So, um, Mata, are you there? Oh, sorry, uh, we still cannot hear you. I, I think if you can use another device, maybe, maybe it's a, uh, it's a, it's a bit better. So while we move on to, okay, um, Blanca, you know, while we're talking about all these things, it would be good to know actually how it feels to be a woman in, 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 in a digital field, in a technology field. Um, being a man, for example, but on, on a personal experience, I, I don't really know what a woman, you know, face and or how they cope in this field. And uh, we, you as, uh, you have a master in e-commerce, and also digital marketing, which means that 24 seven, you're always on your laptop. So how does it feel to, to be a woman looking at the issue that has been raised in, uh, above? Um, there's this kind of stereotype in Africa, wherever, when they see women in tech, um, they, 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 they kind of look at you in a negative way. So can you share your personal experience with us and you know, let's see what we can learn from this. Yes, of course. Uh, let me share with you uh, a small presentation I prepared for today. So I can share with you my, my experience in technology. Uh, second. Sorry. Okay. Are you able to see it? Yeah? Not yet. Not yet. No? Okay. Not yet. Okay, okay. I can, I can see yes. that now. Yeah. yeah. You see the presentation? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. So let me introduce myself briefly first. My name is uh, Blanca Pichardo. Um, Thank you so much beforehand for this opportunity, okay? Uh, my name is Blanca Pichardo. Um, I am from the Dominican Republic, uh, but currently living in Spain for over seven years now. And I am considered a, a woman in technology. I am a digital marketing professional. Uh, the Dominican Republic, my home country, is also facing the, the same issues we are discussing here in this event. In fact, we are um, struggling um, with similar problems related to gender balance, both technically and, and culturally. Um, when I moved to Spain was when I realized that actually we have a long way to go and there is a lot to be done. It's not that I wasn't conscious about the problem. It's just that you as a girl get used to the reality you live in and you develop like a conscious unconscious bias, uh, especially if you don't have the resources such as an inclusive education, mentors, female role models, and etc. Um, I didn't have anything of that. 
but I had my curiosity and my ambition and I always knew that I wanted to study a career in technology and or uh, the internet. Uh, thankfully, I applied for, for a scholarship uh, and turned into uh, the beginning of, of my career. So I would like to explain uh, a little bit to you about this experience. Uh, but I want to say beforehand that this is uh, very personal. I mean, this is my, my personal experiences and this is not by far the reality of all women here in Spain. Because even though we have some issues solved, there's still a lot of work to do. Okay, and I know my, my personal experience is, uh, is very positive, but I, I, I have spoken with some of my female friends and I know that they are not experiencing the same, the same um, situation, okay? So, um, First is that in my in, in the company I work for, uh, I don't per perceive my gender as a, as a problem. It's like I can speak with everybody without thinking, or they speak to me without thinking if I am a woman or, or a man. I have I, I haven't had any situation where I felt discriminated against by my gender or not or or taken less seriously, you know. Uh, but that's why. Uh, because I, I, I have the luck of working for a very inclusive company. They actually, they make huge efforts to create um, a good environment for all us as people. Uh, I also uh, have the same opportunities that, and benefits in terms of training, in, term, in terms of uh, duties and everything everything as my male colleagues so I can not say so far that my gender um, talking about personal or familiar status that we tend to say that uh, some companies and I know that this is true because I, now I have the two like the two words in my mind and I know that uh, it can be quite different from my home country to here that some companies uh, cast you aside as a woman when you start to have kids, right? And they don't give you the same, like the same opportunities or it's like you, you remain in the same position. But uh, you can see if your company uh, cares about that, for example, when they ask you during an interview if you are single or not, of, or if you are planning on having kids, for example, uh, that is, something that I have experienced before. Um, but I don't have this, um, this experience in my current company. Or for example, I work with uh, excellent professionals, excellent women professionals who are also mothers, and some of them are even single mothers. So you, you can see that they, they make hu uh, huge efforts on creating this um, work-life balance, okay? Um, um, I also feel that, uh, uh, that I am encouraged and supported since, for example, if I think of the clients I, I offer services to, most of them are females and they are in a, in a good, uh, like in leadership positions. And it gives you strength and it gives you, it makes you feel that you can also achieve great things and your gender is not going to be a problem at all. So uh, speaking up is important. Uh, when I say that I feel confident to ask for what I think or what I need is because I know that the path might not be always um, smooth. So, so it's important to be confident enough to ask for what you think you deserve or raise your hands and say something when you feel that things are not uh, doing in a in a proper way or taking you into consideration as a woman or treating treating you uh, the same as as men um i know that things uh could uh seem uh they are perfect here but they are not they are not there is still a lot of challenges to 